What's up guys, Bill here. In this video, I'm going to talk about episodic pivots. This is a reliable, momentum-based, mostly off the open strategy with great risk to reward that's quickly becoming one of my favorite setups right now. And <clears throat> so let's talk about what it is, all right? An episodic pivot happens when a stock gaps up on major news. That's a significant change to this stock story or current situation, okay? So that's where the idea of episodic comes from, like a episode of a TV show where you're changing the story, changing the storyline, okay? Um, a phrase I've always loved when it comes to stocks is that price will tell you a story and volume verifies the story's accuracy. So with these episodic pivots, what we're looking for is stocks that gap up around 10 or more percent on major volume, okay? That's the first, just kind of the way you scan through and decide if you're gonna be able to play these. Let's talk about why they're so reliable and, and kind of the keys behind what makes them work, okay? When a stock gets these big gap ups, they kind of come suddenly and are a major change to the stock story or current way it's trading, big institutions are sort of caught off guard, right? And they're suddenly coming to the realization that, wow, okay, the way we had valued this name before, it is now very cheap. And we need to start accumulating it aggressively and way quicker than we normally would. You know, institutions usually accumulate kind of slowly over a long period of time and then the big moves come, right? This sort of happening opposite. This big move comes out of nowhere. They're caught off guard and they want to be in because they think it's going to go up based on this new information, all right? So these gaps can happen. They happen a lot during earnings, right? Which is great because we're in the depths of earnings season here with all the big tech names coming out this week. Um, they can happen on certain types of news like mergers, partnerships, um, random guidance a company projects their earnings are going to increase for whatever reason um, in the medical field, getting, um, you know, a, a great results from a study or something like that, or a trial um, patents being awarded, all these types of things. Right. Um, but they kind of come out of nowhere. Usually except for earnings, you can kind of schedule ahead and that's what makes playing them off earnings. Great. And they catch big institutions off guard. So you're trading along with big money, supporting the direction that you're going in. And it makes these trades more reliable, even though they're momentum based entries off the open. All right. Um, let's talk about execution of these strategies. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different examples today, four different examples. Two are going to be, uh, episodic pivots that happened because of news. This sort of came out of nowhere. And two are going to be earnings related, earnings from last week. All right. The first is SMCI. SMCI on the 19th got news right at close of, I guess it was really close of the 18th, got news that they were going to be, um, guiding 120% increase of their annualized, uh, annualized revenue, right? Which is major. So it gapped up in after hours and then the next day opened over 10% up. Okay. So let's see. This happened on the 19th. For execution, what we're going to be doing is playing a momentum opening range break. And with these, um, setups, we're going to be doing it on the one minute. And before we jump down into there, I just want to talk about the volume. I kind of glossed over that. Um, we want major volume, right? And early in the day, what you're going to be looking for is you want to see within the first 5, 10, 15 minutes, close to an average day's whole volume, right? So pretend this candle wasn't here and it was off the open, so there was no volume and we're watching. We want to see volume of like right here, basically in the first 10, 15 minutes. Okay. And then obviously by the end of the day, you, you look back and you say, wow, look at how much volume there was one of its biggest days ever. And we're going to be entering on the one minute. So sometimes it's a little hard to know for sure that soon into the day, if it breaks out right away, how much volume there is, you can look at the one minute of the previous days and kind of compare. Um, but with earnings names and things like that, it's going to be pretty safe that you're going to get a lot of volume. Okay. Um, so let's jump into the one minute chart. Um, 
on the 19th here. And what we're going to be doing is drawing an opening range of the first one minute candle, high and low. <clears throat> well, actually, you know, you don't really need the low. We'll, we'll cover that. But we do need the high because our entry is going to be the first push through. We don't even need to wait for a close or anything like that. We're just looking for the first push through the one minute opening range high. And that's our entry. Now, our risk is low a day. Below a day isn't always going to be the low of the first one minute candle, right? Not everything's just going to open and then rip uh, right away. Sometimes it sells off a little more, consolidates a little more, then goes. So your low a day might end up down here or something like that. Um, but we're looking here and we can see that this opening range in just one minute is nine bucks. It's pretty impressive, right? Uh, but, and that might seem like a lot, right? You're opening up here, you're opening yourself up to nine bucks of potential risk. But as you can see, um, the high of the day was 428. That's, uh, almost $80 of, of, uh, a gain, right? So your risk to reward, even with this pretty, uh, substantial opening range on one minute is almost 10 to one, right? Um, so basically, you know, while we're entering here, we're opening on the push through opening range high. And then, I mean, you're just as far as profit taking goes, it's really up to you. T pr taking profit is a little bit more of an art than an exact science. It's going to depend on where this stock is gapping to. Are there pivots, obvious pivots around? Sometimes there's not, right? Sometimes things are gapping towards highs or into places of the chart that haven't been a long time. Um you can look for obviously your daily or weekly pivots to scale at. You can look for any GEX or dark pools that are nearby. You can use psych levels, like on a stock that trades at this high of a price, probably every five bucks, you know? So if your opening range high is 347, maybe you're taking um, small trims at 350, 55, 60. I mean, but this thing just went crazy. And this is a very extreme example. They're not all going to blow up this big where they do 30% in a day, especially larger cap names um, like I trade. I only trade options. I, I'm not trading like tiny penny stocks and biotechs and things like this, um, which, you know, are the stocks that are mostly going to give you 30% in a day moves. This is pretty crazy. But as you can see, it just goes and goes and goes. And one other thing you can do um, with your profit taking is use those nine and 20 EMAs, even though if it's even though it's the one minute. Uh, look at the respect here just forever. Right. You don't even lose the 20 until. You know, we'd already hit 417. I mean, that's a huge move. You lose the nine. I mean, you nitpick and say you lost it there. You definitely lose it here after a move all the way to 396. You know, so psych levels, you don't, you want to take profit at 400, right? I mean, look at 400, wick off of it. Anything you can to do to take profit, lock it in. Um, if you're buying weeklies, you definitely want to, want to be more aggressive with your profit taking. If you can play these. EPs as swing starters too, because a lot of times you'll get continuation for several days or weeks after. You can see that we got this big candle up. That's the one we were just looking at, but it went higher the next day, consolidated a little bit and went even higher the fourth day. So these, you can turn these things into swings. You can buy some time, take a lot of your profit on day one, um, and, and save some more to see if you can get, um, some extension and some continuation out of it. All right. So that's us MCI. Another um, one I played recently that had news uh, after hours was Rumble. So Rumble had a partnership announced with Barstool. And, um, oh yeah, one other little thing I wanted to touch on on the SMCI, guys, is <clears throat> when your story changes, when the stock story changes suddenly, it's even better. It's like a, it's like rocket fuel if the stock previously had kind of been like consolidating for a while or maybe even trading poorly against the broader market, as you can see here on SMCI, it had been in a base f since August of 2023. That is a pretty long base of, you know, four, five months, almost six months. Um, so when you get that news and you break out of that base over this major pivot, look at that pivot. That just, I mean, that really, this is the most elite kind of 
uh, episodic pivot you can get where it's breaking out of either a base over a tested high or, you know, it's a it's a poorly performing stock like rumble <laughs> um, that suddenly gets good news. OK, so these two really worked well. Um, you can see that rumble was also in a long base and actually lost it to the downside and then got news. Um, so it gapped up here on the 22nd. Let's jump in and look at our one minute chart. All right, now, here's our first one-minute candle. We're going to draw the high. I had a level here already because this was an inside week setup coming into the week, and just this so just so happened to be the inside week high, and it's the four psych, so it makes sense. But that's right where our first candle went and closed. Um, and then, you know, unlike um, SS, SMCI, it didn't rip right straight up. There was a little bit of a period of consolidation. So you're going to mark here, that's your low a day, and that's going to be our risk, right? So if we came up here and got triggered and it just didn't have the steam for whatever reason and came back here and lost this low a day, we would be out. But fortunately, once we pushed through and we're entering here, it held this area, held the nine and started moving up and had already made a nice 50 cent move there. And look at it respecting those EMAs to get another little bit of a 10 cent pop here and you're up a lot on the day already here. So how do you want to manage this position? I mean, it really depends. Obviously we lose the EMAs here. Um, this is just the one minute chart though. So you don't really need to be freaking out too much. This is just the ultimate sign of strength. If it like SMCI, if it's going to grind up the one minute, nine and 20 EMA for hours, I mean, that's just insanely strong, but you can take a stock like this and look at the five minute um, and just look at a little bit higher time frame uh, chart and um, excuse me. I really hate how Weeble just won't um, make it easier to uh, navigate um, these charts anyway. Um, so you can see here what you switch to the five in that dump that you see earlier that, you know, shakes you out maybe of the one minute isn't that big of a deal on the five it starts to flag and regain and never loses the 20 holds it again and you can end up getting you know another 30 cents out of that move by using the emas and you can also you know this is keeping your wrist tight right because you're you're in the green here by a ton and you're basically just watching this to see how strong the move and how good the continuation is. Your risk is down here, remember? I mean, and once you're up here, set a break even stop and now your risk is here and we never come close. So this could be a play that you, like I talked about earlier, if you have a little time on your contracts, you can swing some of your leftover contracts to the next day and you see that we get more continuation. This thing goes all the way to seven, okay? Um, so just another great example there. Uh, let's talk about some earnings, recent earnings, right? Uh, Netflix. All right, Netflix had earnings on the 23rd, and obviously it gapped up. And the, the big reason for that was that they uh, significantly added but they added significant amount of subscribers in Q4, way more than expected, okay? Um, so... Everyone loved that. We got a big gap up um, here on the 24th. Let's check out that. Okay. Here's your first one minute candle. There's your range high. And on the next candle, we poke above it and we're in. OK, um, this is another one that just goes right away. So your low of day, your risk is there. It struggles a little bit, but it holds, you know, there's no we're not even coming close to the risk. And then it just starts to rip. And this one also holds really well on the nine. And uh, with Netflix, you know, you're looking for another one that's trading in a high a price every five bucks or so. So you're entering here around 540. You could be looking to profits at 545. Nice pop to it. Uh, 550, 
555 ish roughly there was a dark pool there 560 right and another thing um especially if you're playing weeklies guys a good if you don't really have any levels around and you're just kind of like struggling like where should i be taking profits on big extension candles like this especially if you're playing weeklies it's always good to take a little bit of trim um because you know there's a chance that you know let's say you're up here right and you're already really green and we're getting close to 560, big psych level, and you get this big pop. The price you get on your contracts here in weeklies is probably going to be more than the price you get later at the same exact price. The price on your contracts is probably going to be more here than here, even though it's the same price. Why? Because of data decay. And why? Because the IV starts to settle back down again. When you're in the middle of a big pump like this, IV really starts to increase more rapidly than average. And you can take advantage of that by selling into these strong candle pushes that close up, you know, impulsive candles that close in your highs and things like that. Instead of waiting for the pullback, you know, waiting and waiting, waiting. And then you sell here at the same level on the chart, but you're taking a discount probably on your sells, right? So that's another thing to think about when you're managing these type of really aggressive momentum, um, Stocks that are just flying and there's a lot of volume coming in. A lot of people are interested in them. Um, that's, you know, and you can see that it just, the stock after that, it kind of just, eh, you know, it just sort of grinds down the rest of the day. You never come close really to your risk. It closes above the low of the day and everything. So at that point, you can decide, do I want to swing a little more uh, the rest into the next day or whatever? And the more time you buy, the better um, for that flexibility. Okay. Lastly, I want to show an example of one that, um, had its earnings and it gapped up and the earnings were decent and they even guided forward a little bit, but it wasn't like a major change to the stock's story. Okay. Let's look at TSM. We'll look at the daily here. We'll notice that first that, you know, here's your big gap up, really nice gap up, oh, just under 10%. And, you know, I say look for stocks that gap up 10 or more percent. If it's like 9%, I'm not going to haggle too much with that. I'll probably check it out. Um, but you can see with TSM, unlike SMCI and um, Rumble, it had been doing okay. You know, like we look at the end of October when SPY started to rally, the market, broader market started to rally. It, TSM mostly played along, okay? Um, so this wasn't a stock that was like in bad shape or had been beaten down too much or anything like that. And its earnings were just okay, and they did have some nice guidance, but nothing insane, nothing like SMCI. Um, and they didn't have any, like, blowout success with anything new like Netflix did with their subscribers. So we can see we get the big gap, and we get really nice volume, too. But let's go in and look at the intraday performance, okay, on 118. Here's our first one minute candle. So we're going to mark the top of that. And here's one that doesn't trigger for a long time, right? And my theory here is because this story didn't change dramatically and this stock wasn't like beat down or anything like that or just super choppy. Um, big money was not quite caught as caught off guard. So they're not in quite as much of a rush or hurry to accumulate this stock today. Okay. So we sell and we go quite a ways down as low as 109.48. So here's your low a day. We don't know that at the time, right? We mark these low a days after we're in the stock. So whenever we get in, whatever the low a day was at that time, that's our risk, right? So we haven't even been able to get in yet, but way later in the day, around 1214 Pacific time, so almost six hours after open, it triggers. And we're in here on this pushover. And look, even though it's super late in the day, you could play this and get yourself a nice almost $1.50 move. It pops, respects the EMAs pretty much. It loses it here, um, but basically grinds up the EMAs on the one minute all the way into close. Um, for a nice small win. Okay. So 
you could have played that one. I would have gave it a shot, but what I wanted to illustrate was the lack of initial explosive move. Most likely due to the fact that even though its earnings were decent and they had a nice little positive guidance forward, it wasn't some type of massive change to the story. Okay, guys? Um, so that's really it for episodic pivots. Uh, lastly, I wanted to give credit to the inventor of this. Um, he goes by Stockby on Twitter. I'm going to leave his um, information down in the uh, description, so make sure you follow him. And also, uh, Qual Maggie really popularized this and made a bunch of money off of it. Uh, he has information on it as well. I'll leave his info in the question or the comments as well or uh, description. If you guys have any questions about this setup, uh, just leave a comment or find me on Twitter. Thank you so much.